The movie begins as LEGO City's best explorer, Clutch Powers, explores an underground cave to retrieve an energy crystal. He reaches a crystal deposit full of different kinds of power crystals. Glowing from a distance is the biggest orange crystal in the cavern that can power up LEGO City for a whole month. He approaches the crystal and pulls it out, but ends up awakening a giant rock monster. The rock monster chases him toward his mining drill vehicle which he later destroys as he tries to escape. It blocks the exit with a giant boulder which leaves no choice for Clutch but to use the mine mech. He climbs aboard the mine mech and wrestles with the rock monster. But the monster is too strong he gets thrown out of the mech. While the monster shows dominance over the broken mech, Clutch notices a pile of bricks and visualizes the vehicles he could build. A race car, a jet, or a slingshot. He decides to make a slingshot and finishes it just in time before the monster attacks again. Clutch grabs a drill head and launches himself into the boulder. The drill head destroys the boulder giving way for Clutch to enter the passage where the monster cannot reach him. When he is about to escape, he discovers that the crystal is a baby rock monster which explains why the giant rock monster chases after him. He gives it a pacifier and builds a stroller to stop the baby from crying. He then returns the baby to its mother and apologizes for his behavior. The rock monster breaks a few orange energy crystals from its body and gives them to Clutch as a reward. With the energy crystal, Clutch makes his way back to Lego City where he appears to be popular among its citizens. When he arrives at the Lego headquarters, a group of Boy Scouts greets him. In Kirk Playwell's office, his boss, he is introduced to his new team members, Rick Masterson, a firefighter, weapons specialist, and demolitions expert, Peg Murray, a biologist, and Bernie Von Beam, the Lego team's most brilliant engineer. Kirk briefs them of their new mission to the Space Police Prison, Planet X-4, where only three prisoners are locked away, the three most vicious criminals in the galaxy. Kirk wants the team to investigate a prison break from two days ago when they receive a distress call from the Watch Commander. After the meeting, Kirk brings them to Arthur Fall who introduces Introduces himself as Clutch Power's number one fan. Arthur obviously cannot hide his excitement from seeing Clutch in person, more so assisting him in a mission. He then provides the ship they will be needing for their mission. The crew dons their spacesuits and climbs aboard the ship. Arthur locks the airtight door and the ship takes off. On their way, Clutch examines his father's journal when Peg arrives. She exclaims that she forgets that Clutch's father is Rock Powers, a famous explorer like his son. She then notices the symbol on the journal which looks identical to the one on the distress call. As the two share a heartfelt conversation, Brick arrives to inform them they have reached the prison planet. The crew lands safely, thanks to Clutch who saves them from Brick's terrible driving skills. To unlock the prison door, Clutch hurriedly builds a giant key from the spare Lego bricks. He manages to open the door and enter the prison. They take off their space helmets and carefully proceed deep into the prison. Clutch instructs Brick to watch their back. They end up in a room full of laboratory tubes with the same symbol as the one in Rock Power's journal. As they continue to investigate, something suddenly moves from inside the tube. But before they can further check, one of the three prisoners, an unseen evil wizard arrives with the other two prisoners and attacks them. He pins the crew with his magic before heading to the cockpit. Brick accidentally shoots one of the laboratory tubes. It turns out that it was the prison commander trapped inside the tube. In the middle of Brick and Peg's bickering, they hear a sound from outside and discover that Malik steals their ship and destroys the remaining prison spaceships before speeding away. Clutch makes a new vehicle using the destroyed parts of the prison spaceships. On their way, while in space, the crew receives a call from an angry KJ led asking them about what happened in prison. Clutch mentions that the prison has the same symbol as the one in his father's journal. Kirk tells them that it is for one of the prisoners in the cell named Omega. However, they must deal with another enemy first, Malak the Malign, the evil wizard of Ashler, a medieval world forged from might and magic. Malak was the one responsible for the ambush at the prison laboratory and the one who led the prisoners to escape. Kirk continues to say that the only weapon that can subdue Malak is the mighty sword of the rightful king, King Rivet. But now that King Rivet is gone, the crew needs to fly to Ashler and help King Rivet's son, Prince Varen, capture the evil wizard. The crew journeys to Ashler and lands on a historical site called the Lego Henge, which unfortunately gets destroyed thanks to Brick. As they walk through the forest, a group of skeleton soldiers in a carriage drives past them. There are prisoners in the cage who need their help. They try to use their high-tech weapons but due to Malik's sorcery, the weapons are of no use. In the distance lies Malik's fortress, resembling a skull that is surrounded by lava. They decide to find the prince first before challenging Malik, and end up in a mine full of disassembled Lego bricks. Clutch assigns a task to the rest of the crew members while he goes on to find Price Varen. 
Brick and Bernie team up to build a war chariot while Peg tracks an animal footprint. The footprint leads her to a dark cave where she finds what seems to be a huge creature that breathes fire. Meanwhile, the skeletons arrive at Malik's fortress with a cage full of prisoners. Malik rages when he learns that the skeletons failed to capture Prince Varen, and orders them to hold the prisoners until they find the prince. He then summons Skelly and Bones to know the whereabouts of the prince. The skeletons explain that the castle has disappeared and so is Prince Varen. Later that day, Malik sees Clutch on the magic crystal on his way to find the prince so he orders Skelly and Bones to follow Clutch. He believes that Clutch will lead them right to the prince's location, and realize his evil plan of taking over Ashlar. Back in the forest, Clutch continues to find the prince, unaware that Skelly and Bones are following him. He ends up at a bridge guarded by a troll named Hogger who promises to bring Clutch to the prince if he manages to pass three tests. Prove that he is the real Clutch powers by building a bridge from the disassembled Lego bricks and answer the riddles about standard eight stud bricks and his father. Clutch gets them all right, and so Hogger agrees to bring him to the prince. Suddenly, Skelly and Bones appear demanding Hogger to hand over Clutch to them. Hogger refuses and attempts to hypnotize them to no avail. He eats Clutch before smacking the two skeletons and runs away into a camouflage wall which opens a door to the castle. Bones and Skelly follow them but Hogger is nowhere to be found. They retreat back to the fortress. Hogger spits out Clutch and brings him beyond the wall where he has hidden the castle to protect the prince from Malak. He then shows the mighty sword of King Rivet tucked away in a chest before taking Clutch to Price Varen. Clutch offers his help, but the prince refuses as he is believed to have less courage and poor sword fighting skills. After the prince declines his help, Clutch returns to his crew who has finished building the cart. He informs them that they will need to stop Malak themselves without the prince. The crew speeds off in their chariot to attack Malak's fortress when Prince Varen arrives with Hogger and the knights to offer their help. Clutch instructs Varen to come with him to sneak into the castle and deal with Malak but Varen refuses at first thinking that he should lead his knights. Clutch asks for Peg's wig and exchanges it for Varen's crown to disguise Peg as the prince. The army and the rest of the crew fight in a tense battle against Malak's skeleton army while Clutch and Varen enter the castle. As they make their way deep into the castle, Malak appears and gives life to one of the knight armor to attack the two. Varen tries to fight but he cannot draw his sword. A swing from the enchanted armor causes Varen to stumble backward, dropping his sword. He hurries to help Clutch defeat the armor. Just then, Malak appears and tries to hypnotize Clutch using the magic ball and his father's voice. Clutch breaks free but Malak sends them into a bone cage above the lake of lava surrounding the fortress. Meanwhile, the skeleton army takes the upper hand and forces the crew and the knights to retreat. Hogger, Bernie, Brick, and Peg crash the chariot into a ditch. Above them, Malak's face appears and threatens them to hand the sword over to him in exchange for Varen and Clutch's life. Hogger has no choice but to surrender the sword as he promised King Rivet no harm will befall Prince Varen. But Malik discovers that the sword is not in the chest, so he restrains Hogger and banishes him away from the fortress. Meanwhile, Clutch learns that the sword is taken by Varen inside the fortress and has dropped it during the fight with the armor. He then uses the bones inside the cage to send a message to the team who then builds a vehicle and jetpack to rescue Clutch and Varen. They reunite with the knights and lead the attack toward the skeleton army. Brick wonders how are they going to rescue the two if they do not have a flying vehicle. Peg whistles and a dragon appears, the creature whom she befriends in the cave. Peg mounts the dragon and frees Clutch and Varen. As the battle continues outside, Clutch and Varen return inside the fortress to retrieve the sword. Varen refuses to wield the sword at first as he believes he cannot do it. He says that only his father can defeat Malak. But Clutch convinces him that the strength of his father lives within him. Just then, Malak appears and orders Varen to surrender the sword. He attacks Varen and tries to hypnotize Clutch again with the magic crystal and promises to help Clutch find his father in exchange for the sword. Varen tells Clutch that he doesn't need to find his father as his father lives within him. Clutch breaks free from Malak's power and gives the sword to Varen. A fight ensues between Malak and the prince. Malak rides an enchanted cloud as he attacks Varen with magic lightning. Varen deflects every attack using the mighty sword. As Malak tries to pin him down, Varen harnesses the sword's true power and captures Malak with a golden chain conjured by the sword. Meanwhile, Brick defeats Skelly and Bones with the help of Bernie who throws spare gear at the skeletons. As Malak has been defeated, the clouds begin to clear out revealing the bright blue sky, the lava disappears, and the skeleton army dissolves into smoke as the knights and the crew celebrate their victory. They return to the castle to honor the new king of Ashlar, King Varen. As Clutch and the others prepare to return to Lego City, Varen offers them his thanks. The crew speeds off to Lego City where they turn over Malak to the authorities. He will be sent again to the prison planet. Kirk congratulates the team for a job well done and informs them that their next target, Omega, has been spotted on the other side of the galaxy. The movie ends as Clutch, Bernie, Brick, and Peg head toward a new adventure to capture Omega.